Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q2 FY24 results conference call of Shri Keshav Simmons and Infra Limited, hosted by Kirin Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gopal Chandak. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. On behalf of Kirin Advisors, I welcome you all to Shri Keshav Cement and Infra Limited due to FR24 phone call. From the management side, we have Mr. Venkatesh Katwa, Chairman, and Mr. Vilash Katwa, Managing Director. Now I hand over call to Mr. Venkatesh Katwa. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Venkatesh Katwa. I'm the chairman of uh, Sri Kesha Cement and Infra Limited. I extend my heartfelt welcome to each one of you joining us for this conference call of Sri Kesha Cement and Infra Limited today, where we aim to dwell into the financial performance of uh, Q2 FY24. But before we get into the specific of uh, Q2 and uh, H1 of FY24, Please allow me to provide a concise overview of our company and its business model. So Keshav Cement and Intra Limited uh, is engaged in manufacture of cement and solar power generation in the state of Karnataka. The cement plants are located at Bagalkot district in Karnataka and solar plant is also located in Koppal which is in the north of Karnataka. The cement is supplied in North Karnataka, coastal Karnataka and uh, Goa and some parts of Maharashtra. For regarding cement, the company has a network of over 350 cement distributors with over 600 plus satellite sales point and uh, over 14 to 15 uh, solar power consumers. Since April 2018, the company has been meeting 100% of its energy requirement through renewable solar power energy. The cement plants of uh, Sri Kesha Cement are the only, uh, likely the only and the earliest cement plants in India to run on 100% green power, resulting in nearly 75 to 80% reduction in the power cost. Currently, the company is increasing its cement production capacity from 3,50,000 metric ton per annum to 1 million metric ton per annum, and which is basically an expansion and modernization of the cement plants. The total project cost is about 125 crores, out of which uh, around 46 crores is raised by uh, in preferential allotment in um, April May 2023. Uh, the plant's current utilization capacity is around 63 to 64 percent. Regarding solar, the plant capacity is 37 megawatt, and last week uh, government of Karnataka has given us a permission to increase the capacity from 37 to 40 megawatt. Uh, solar plant. This project is uh, entirely funded by the uh, suppliers with the payment duration of over four years to five years. Now to talk about the dynamics of the industry, India is the second largest producer of cement in the world. It accounts for more than 8% of the global installed capacity. The cement demand in India is exhibiting a CAGR of 5.65% from 2016 to 2022. As India has a high quantity and quality of limestone deposits throughout the country, the cement industry promises huge potential of growth. India has a total of 210 large cement plants. Nearly 32% of the cement production capacity is based in South India. As per ICRA, FY22, the cement production in India is expected to, sorry, in FY24, the cement production is expected to increase uh, 12% year on year, driven by rural housing demand and government's strong focus on infrastructure development, uh, providing three case of cement with an abundant opportunities for growth. Navigating this dynamic landscape, our strategic expansion of cement plant and solar plant ensures that we're all well prepared to capitalize on high development prospects in all the segments of the cement industry. This commitment positions us to thrive in the evolving automotive uh, real estate landscape, ensuring sustained growth and success of our uh, company. Uh, 
regarding the results in the q2 fy24 the revenues from the operations was derived predominantly predominantly from cement sector contributing to around 77% while remaining 20% 23% uh, was contributed by solar energy and other sources we are enhancing our cement capacity to 1 million tons and orders of machinery have now been already been placed the capacity advance addition with advanced machinery uh, which will help in de bottlenecking and increasing the capacity the main objective of this expansion is to cut down on the fuel consumption and the power consumption uh, per ton of uh, cement manufacturing the current cement plant uh, is was a closed unit which was purchased in 2007 the cement plant itself belonged about 30 years back with the old technology baggage so the current expansion is basically going to uh, not only de bottleneck we will optimize the cement plant with the new kiln and the new pre the tower and the new cooler basically bringing down the fuel cost uh, as per the industry standards even the solar plant is uh, expected to add another 3 megawatt of capacity will which will suddenly boost our uh, profits as mentioned earlier the cement outlook is positive and demand normally picks up post monsoon so the second half of current year will be more opportunistic bringing healthy expansion into our uh, financial performance Furthermore, the rise in cement capacity will not only expand the top line but also boost the profitability at an exponential rate, owing to uh, you know cutting down on the cost variable cost of manufacturing of cement. So, taking you through the Q2, FY24 and H1, FY24, in the second quarter uh, of this financial year, Kishu Cement reported an income of 25.76 crores with EBITDA of 7.95 crores. uh with the ebitda margin of 30.84 crores during uh, <clears throat> the first half of fy24 the ebitda is around uh, 18.22 crores which is almost comparable to h1 of the previous year uh the ebitda margin of uh, 31.68% is achieved which is almost the Uh, one of the highest EBITDA per ton of cement in the industry, only owing to the solar renewable power capital plant. The financial picture further revealed a net profit of around 2.75 crores for the H1, FY24, translating a net profit of around 4.78 percent. EPS for the same period stood at 1.84, indicating a positive trajectory for the company's financial performance in the first half of the fiscal year. Looking ahead to the second half of FY24, CK Cement and Infra has an optimistic outlook, which is grounded in the strong Q2 performance and steady initiatives geared towards industry prominence. The company's consistent growth and financial stability position is favorably, and is favorable and continued success in the dynamic market landscape. In summary, CK Cement and Infra Limited, a financial performance in FY24, coupled with strategic initiatives, highlights its dedication to excellence. The company continues to be preferred supplier, emphasizing its commitment to deliver top quality products in the market. So, before we delve into the question and session, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all our stakeholders for being an integral part of our growth journey. Your support and involvement has played a crucial role in our success, and we genuinely, we genuinely appreciate your valuable contribution. So, with this, I would like to open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you once again for your presence and continued support. I look forward for the questions going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Gopal. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Hemant, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. 
Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you. Sir, I wanted to know um, about the current budget that's going on. So what is the current status of it? So what I'll do today is uh, I will, uh, uh, you know, our MD, Mr. Vilas Katoy, is overlooking the uh, expansion uh, directly. So I will let him address this question so that uh, we all can have a correct picture on what is going on. Over to you, Vilas. Okay. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Uh, uh, could you uh, just uh, repeat the question because I just uh, missed it for uh, that second when you asked me the question. Sir, I wanted to know more about this capex. What is the current status of this capex? Oh, good, good. Uh, currently, uh, the capex, um, like Pinde said, that we are now expanding to 1 million ton capacity. Uh, all major equipments have been ordered. Okay. So I would say 95% of the equipments have been ordered. Only non-critical equipments and off-the-shelf uh, items like you know instruments and wires, they have not been ordered yet. I mean, because they will be required at the very last moment. Um, rest all has been happened, and uh, the the whole civil uh, progress is uh, on time. Um, and I expect this uh, whole thing to get over by June uh, next year. Usually, this kind of expansion takes for 16 to 18 months. Okay. But we started in July, uh, I think July 3rd was the first uh, um, uh, installment of payment we got from bank and we started from that day. Um, uh, it should take uh, at least December next year, but I think we should be done and going by uh, June of uh, 24. Okay. So that, that's so the current series. We right can uh, start our commercial production by 1st of July. Uh, June, yes, July, yes, we should start the commercial production by July, yes. Okay. Sir, once this uh, expansion is there, do we require any other approvals from government? No. Thankfully, no. We have taken all the approvals. Okay. All were there. Once uh, everything is ready, we can start the commercial production. Absolutely. Absolutely. What we usually do is only one thing is required is uh, consent for operation. Okay. So consent for expansion already is given. Consent for operation, what we do just before a month before we start the operations or maybe two months before the operation, we apply it and we get it. It doesn't take more than a you know, 15, 20 days to get the permission. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sir, so one thing, uh, when you, uh, once this mission is uh, ready at your plant, a new missionary, so when you are uh, changing this missionary, how many days plant will be stopped? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, you mean to say the interconnection? Yes, yes. Whatever yes. new uh, missionary you will be adding. Yeah, yeah. So what we have done is we are trying to make sure the interconnection time is minimal. So it should take not more than, uh, not less than uh, 25 days. So 20, 25 days, there could be a disconnection, but that would not stop our dispatches because what we'll do is we will, we, we are trying to now maintain our inventory so nicely that at the time of 25 days shutdown of that interconnection, we will have our clinker ready to keep grinding and going. And the business is always going like that. Okay. So. So that when this will happen, sir? This should happen in the month of, uh, I think they maybe uh, we are trying to do it such a way that it's going to be a rainy season uh, because and that's the time it's a lull period in cement period. So maybe in the month of uh, um, June uh, beginning, something like that, we'll take a little quick shutdown and then we'll interconnect it. By June end, we should be done with the entire expansion process. Okay, okay. So once this uh, expansion is there, we will have uh, almost three times the current capacity. So uh, are we having any plans for marketing in different regions or expanding distributors? So can you throw some light on it? Yeah, I think, uh, Vintage, do you want to throw a light or? Yes, yes. So typically, as of now, um, the existing market itself, once we go deeper, will uh, will allow us to you know sell the entire the one million ton capacity. In fact, the only reason why we are not able to go above and beyond right now is because of our restricted EBITDA margins because of very high consumption of uh, coal and electricity at this point in time. Uh, apart from that, we will also you know try to go into a, other bigger markets like Pune and Bangalore, which we feel we may not be required because the existing market itself is big enough to consume uh, one million ton capacity. In cement industry, 1 million ton capacity is not very significant. So we are very confident that uh, with the addition 
uh, we will venture into industrial projects, government related projects, and uh, we should be able to sell the entire uh, quantity. Okay. So for this uh, industrial project, uh, do you have uh, sufficient manpower and sales team to uh, go and meet these people on a regular basis? Absolutely. Basically, what happens is uh, when we talk about industrial projects and also this uh, infrastructure projects, we will have to give a vision on the pricing for them for a longer period of time. So with the kind of capacity that we will have, we will be able to provide that, which we are not able to provide today. As in there is a huge road project going on and or a huge canal work going on, we will not be able to bid for the entire project or a part of the project with a longer vision on the pricing, which of course will be possible with the new capex. Okay, so we already have the sales people, sir, or are you are planning to hire some new people? No, we will have to hire more people. We will have to hire more people in sales, in marketing, with the different department will be created to, uh, you know, address go down to the uh, smallest retail points. So there is going to be some addition of uh, a, a manpower. Okay. So because that is the only uh, area where we will be focusing. Everything else is taken care of. To sell the additional uh, you know, uh, capacity is something which we are going to be extremely focused on. Please go ahead, Emanji. Sir, actually now our capacity, whatever existing capacity is there, we are uh, doing 60, 65% of it. Mm -hmm. So why we are not uh, uh, taking few salespeople now as a pilot project and uh, we are trying to uh, uh, engage with these people because we had we have another 30 35 percent still left in the current capacity itself. So why so, we are not doing that? So basically we are restricted because of our lower EBITDA margin. Since my production cost is very high, I have to be selling with a uh, with a certain profit margin itself. Uh, which is why we are not able to, you know, concentrate on giving any kind of media discounts. And uh, well, that has been a constant problem in the last five years for us, which is why, again, like I said, we are not able to go beyond a certain point. So now, in spite of that, uh, this next quarter, we will be expecting a higher uh, capacity utilization. So capacity utilization is not a problem at all. Because of our restricted EBITDA margins, there is a restriction in... Uh, how much we can sell outside. And uh, with this capex, that is the exact thing what we are addressing. We'll cut down the you know, production cost by nearly 25 to 30%. And that is going to give you a okay. big boost for us to compete in the market. Okay. Sir, my last question is related to the solar. Once uh, this uh, capacity, new capacity is there, I think most of the power will be used inside our uh, organization only. So that's in that case, how do we cater to existing solar customers? The what we have done is we have not signed any long-term PPA with any of the customers, owing to the fact okay. that we knew somewhere in the future we are going to for expansion. So what we are selling is uh, due to the incentives what we have got from the government of Karnataka, we are able to sell the power literally to anyone who gives us the best price. So and uh, with the condition that it is not going to be long-term. So once our one million ton up, we will, uh, you know, either stop supplying or only supply uh, only maybe four to five percent of the solar power, where the rest will still be consumed in uh, the cement plant. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for all the answers. That's it from my side. Thank you, Minji. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Chinmay Rane from Kojin Finvest. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so for the opportunity. So my first question is, uh, what is the rationale behind increasing the solar capacity by 3 megawatts? And what is the purpose we are planning to spend on? Uh, okay, I could not hear the question properly, but did you ask uh, what is the capacity we are increasing in solar plant? Uh, why we are increasing? What is the rationale behind it? Okay. The rationale behind it is uh, what is happening currently is uh, uh, after almost uh, five years of existing solar plant, there is certain amount of degeneration what happens in the solar panels. And we already have the existing land plus the transmission line, everything, and the common infrastructure like office, manifold remain same. So adding will just add additional units for us. And since we're selling the power, uh, since uh, we're selling the power at around six rupees, 80% to 7 rupees, 
it is giving us a very high ROI, which is why we thought of adding the 3 megawatt. Okay, but then we already have the infrastructure in place, and it could have been more than the 3 megawatt, and that could have been added to our EBITDA uh, and towards our profitability. No, currently the available land within the existing plant premises allows us to add only 3 megawatt. And not only that, uh, we are also restricted by, since the permission has been taken on 20 megawatt and 10 megawatt EC capacities, we are not allowed to change the transformers. To okay. change the transformers, we will have to go for a certain other kind of clearance from the government of Karnataka, which will not avail us those kind of incentives. So what is happening is we are only adding a DC capacity, uh, which means what technically happens is uh, only between uh, 12.30 or 11.30 to 12.30, uh, at the peak level, if there is completely sunny day, sudden generation is lost. But we require a significant of generation from morning till uh, 11.30 and 12.30 up to evening. So that ROI, based on generation specs, the ROI appears very positive. Okay. So next question is with regard to the cement capacity. We are already seeing our uh, mechanism transport. Uh, uh, Ms. Rane, uh, your line is not much clear. Is it possible yes. to use a handset in case we are using the speaker mode? Um, no, it's a handset only. Am I clear now? It's better now. <laughs> yeah. So my clear. next question is with regard to the cement capacity. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to understand, like we had seen about mechanism, some usage of the poles, the pet co, we are doing lots of things. But then uh, for the past few quarters, we have not seen that tangible impact on the EBITDA market. So what what is the reason behind it? Where, what is going wrong uh, in case of improvement sure. in the EBITDA market? So typically what happened was when we changed, I think last year, somewhere in June, July 2022, we changed from... Uh, uh, coal oh, to pet coal. Yeah. We slowly progressed to 100% pet coal uh, in a quarter or so, maybe September 2022 or so. Mm. So what happened was, even though the pet coal is costing much lesser than the coal, mm. but overall cost of pet coal also increased. It is cheap, it is less expensive compared to coal. That is the only fact. So had we we been using uh, coal by now, our profit margins wouldn't have been as it is right now. And secondly, what happened was, uh, even though Petco prices have come down in the last three to four months, mm -hmm. but due to the FIFO method of calculation in accounting, mm -hmm. we technically are consuming coal, uh, Petco, which was bought at the highest cost. So Q2 typically showed you results where cement pricing is the lowest because cement pricing uh, is shown on the uh, Q2 results as it is. Whereas the consumption of raw material is depending on PFO method. The person you are speaking with has put your call on hold. Please stay. Hello, did I lose the connection? Uh, yes, sir. Sorry for that, sir. No, please continue. Okay. okay. So technically, uh, the cost of raw material, what you see in the books, accounts for uh, the Petco, what has been purchased three to four months back, which is when it had reached its peak. So that is why we are not able to see the uh, figures on the financials as of now. But since the Petco price have come down, the lower cost Petco, you will see the consumption in the next quarter, next couple of quarters. That is when the uh, you know, results are likely to appear. So from Q3, can we see some better results? Yes. I mean, that if assuming that everything, uh, you know, assuming if we had reached, assuming if we just same quantity in Q2, what we uh, do in Q3, the results are going to be much better because uh, due to FIFO method, we would have been utilizing the pet cook of lower cost. Okay. So the last question is that how has been cement prices? I understand the cement prices during the monsoon and the, even the reported quarter has been stable or maybe comparatively on a downward. So what is the trend now we are seeing with the cement prices? And have we taken any price hike uh, uh, in the last few months? Yes, so typically monsoon is the baddest region. In fact, uh, Q2 compared to the previous financial year Q2, the prices have gone down about 2 to 3%. In fact, even the dispatches have gone up by around 7%. In okay. spite of that, uh, uh, we were not able to enjoy the benefits of uh, uh, the increased uh, capacity. And secondly, like I said, the cost of raw material increased due to the FIFO method of calculation. Yeah. Technically, Q3 is much better and Q4 is generally the best. So, 
and uh, even on uh, larger scale h2 is generally better compared to h1 so for this financial year we already crossed the bad times q3 and q4 are likely to be better as we can be seen in all the previous financial years so you expect some cement prices rise in the karnataka region yes it has hiked last month uh, so technically uh, at the end of october and uh, this month yeah we have enjoyed the benefit of the hike and we have hiked the prices i have seen in the market and what was the quantum of that hike sir so quantum you know uh, on average about 300 to 400 rupees is what we are seeing over uh, in this month okay and what about the current capital utilization uh in h1 uh, it has been around 63% uh so i think q3 it has been uh, 63% overall could be a little higher than that okay. and h2 we are expecting a little higher uh, condition because obviously since price will come up uh, when the margins go up we are able to offer discounts and you know able to increase the capacity utilization too okay. so with this increase in the capacity expansion we are already using only the 60 to 70% So, do you think after increasing the capacity from 0.35 million tons to the planning increase the planning capacity to the overall capacity increase to the 1 million tons, do you think that we can see some better capacity utilization? How is the demand spanning over there? So, definitely yes. So, uh, uh, what the way we have projected this first year, we have shown only 50 to 55 percent capacity utilization because there is a sudden jump in the overall capacity. Our biggest take in this. Cap- KPEX is that our uh, cost of production will go down drastically, which will allow us to go dig deeper, which will allow us funding into better marketing and sales uh, budgets. And based on those activities, and also with better beta margins, we can approach bigger contractors and give better uh, payment terms. Based on all these factors, we are confident that uh, we will achieve the requ- required capacity utilization. In fact, in 2016-17, our capacity was 0.1 million tons, and we increased the capacity to 0.35 million tons. It just took about one and a half years to reach uh, around 63-65 percent uh, capacity utilization. So yes, as we have a bigger capacity, we can approach bigger customers, institutional buyers, and then uh, give better payment terms. And based on that, we can expect the capacity just to go higher. So, but with this, we can have an increase in the overhead. So, how will it have an impact on the data model? You think still that there will be a good improvement in the data model with this increase overhead reaching to the higher territory? So, the reason why we are going to increase the data model significantly, let me put it this way: now, other cement plants are enjoying about 800 to 900 data margins uh, in the uh, last year. Otherwise, mm-hmm. technically, cement enjoys around. 1100 to 1200 ebita margin per ton of cement mm-hmm. if you look at us if i consider the power which has been utilized if you look at our balance sheet it will show almost 1400 rupees the ebita margins per ton of cement but that is not accurate because uh, that includes a very low cost of power now if i take off the power as in the power we have consumed at the market price our ebita margin is at around 150 to 200 rupees Whereas industry is generating a bit of around 900 rupees to 1000 rupees per metric ton, considering market, uh, power at the market price itself. So that huge difference is only because our fuel consumption is around 1100 kilocalories per ton, opposed to industry standard of 700 kilocalories. Mm-hmm. So that saving of 400 kilocalories at a cost of 1 rupee 60 per second kilocalorie will save us around 600 to 650 kilocalories just on fuel consumption. Even the power we are consuming almost 110 kilowatt ampere hour or k units per ton of cement. Industry is consuming about 60 units. So with this capex, we intend to reach around 65 units. So typically, you sell you save about 55 units of power into the market price of around uh, uh, 7 rupees. You save around uh, another 380 rupees uh, per metric ton. Mm-hmm. So 600 380 plus. What is going to happen is. Uh, Uh, there is no significant addition of uh, uh, labor in the plant itself, mm-hmm. other than the interest and the sales, including sales. Uh, no other uh, power, uh, no other addition of fixed cost is there. Mm-hmm. So fixed cost is increasing by you know hardly about 20-25 percent, whereas the capacity is increasing by almost 300 percent, mm-hmm. which means that your fixed cost per ton of cement also is going down. 
So all put together, we are expecting reasonably to generate around 900 EBITDA, 900,000 rupees EBITDA per metric ton. Plus, you already always have that solar EBITDA of about 35 to 36 crores adding to the books. So that is the whole object and the plan behind this uh, capex, which is why the management is confident to achieve the, uh, you know, the uh, EBITDA margins like we discussed. Then the last question is with regarding to the uh, raw material sources. So we do not have any land for mine sectors. We are mining it on the market. So with this increase in the capacity by almost three times, do we have a sufficient supply of the limestone, or would there be any problem with it? So as of now, we are the only buyers of uh, limestone with around about 15 to 20 suppliers of limestone mine owners over there. So as such, we don't foresee any challenge. In any case, limestone is one of the uh, lowest cost contribution among the raw materials, even though by quantity is very high. Mm -hmm. But yes, all the mining leaves put together, uh, they have over uh, 100 million tons of uh, reserves, not 100, more than uh, 150 to 200 million tons of reserves. And, uh, and we are the only limestone buyer, the only plan to buy limestone. So as of now, we are spoiled for choice, but uh, we don't foresee any challenges uh, with the purchase of limestone is concerned. We have been doing that in the last 25 years, in any case. Okay, so um, if I may ask one more question. So you were uh, negotiating with the Canada Bank, I believe, uh, for its expansion plan. So what is the rate of interest we could uh, get it from them? So currently we are getting the rate of 10.45%, uh, but it, we are expecting it to go down by about 50 to 60 basis points. That is what they have assured over the phone. So, uh, you know, we are hoping to, you know, get the clarification, you know, maybe another couple of weeks. And for any brand development expenses you are targeting? Any what? Brand development expenses? Uh, that is a continual process which we are doing in any case. But the significant part will come once we close, come close to, uh, uh, you know, uh, commissioning. So three months before commissioning, we will have a very hard hitting marketing and sales promotion is happening. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Aman from Aman Investments. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you, sir, for having my question. And first of all, I'm very new to the company. So, yeah, sir, my, I have only three questions. First and then I will join the queue. So the first sure. question, uh, you had discussed in the initial stages about the geographic expansion, that you were not just seeing Karnataka, but seeing Bombay, uh, the Maharashtra side, and the other northern states as well. So if you can just give the uh, rationale of expanding beyond Karnataka because our capacities are less. And the, at the second part of this question is, with the enhanced capacities in June, which may be uh, commissioning, are we on the track uh, for commissioning to the June date? Sure. So there are only two questions I have regarding the geography expansion of sales and then the CAPEX project, are we on track, yeah, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. Then I'll ask a question. I'll follow the answer. Sure, sure. So regarding geographic expansion, uh, the management fees that the existing sales uh, geography that we are uh, going through, which is South Maharashtra, Goa, and North Karnataka, is sufficient to address our 1 million ton capacity expansion too. So when I meant to say we could reach Pune and Bangalore, it meant to say that uh, with the kind of capacity that we have, we can always have a better marketing uh, in these towns since the logistics costs are very high here, but it can be consumed because of the improved EBITDA margins. So generally when you have a bigger market uh, area, the sales capacity utilization becomes much more easier compared to now. So we may not, of course, go up to Bombay, but I think we could reach Pune and Bangalore if there is a need. Now regarding the project, uh, definitely yes. Project is definitely on the track. And uh, as has been assured in the previous uh, calls, uh, as of now, the supply position of the uh, suppliers and the construction of civil, everything is going on time. Uh, if anything comes up, we will be the first person to inform the shareholders. Otherwise, as of now, we don't see any delay happening. Perfect. So the second question was on the mid, when we are having such a capex of uh, three times, or so, 
are we seeing any 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 future because our, our balance sheets the ratios which is inventory receivables are on a very healthy note do we see it to get adverse because inventory cycle of the working capital cycle is 60 days to 70 are we seeing any larger cycles when the capex increases or the capacity how are we looking the matrices going forward these balance sheet ones so typically i expect ratios to improve see uh, in fact this year the ratios have already improved maybe if you look at the balance sheet you can see it. uh typically what happened was in the previous years we invested heavily into solar we almost spent about in the last five years we spent almost about 200 crores in expand you know putting our 37 megawatt capacity now with solar plant what typically happens is it also uh, since we're utilizing if it cap to and very uh, the amount of sales generated from a 37 megawatt solar plant is very low compared to the investment it does uh, agonize the ratios because with the high depletion comes uh, high losses and of course the deferred tax liability which is not a cash loss translates into cutting down on the retained earnings which is when your equity will start uh, you know diluting or coming down it's all in the adjustments which has got nothing to do with the uh, production or uh, this thing since we are seen as a cement plant whereas uh, the adjustment is happening due to the high depletion of solar plant uh, to for a few years it appeared that the ratios have uh, gone uh, astray but actually in reality it had not it is only because of the in date adjustments due to high concentration and high level of uh, depreciation uh, we lost on deferred tax liability which affected our uh, retained earnings and hence the equity base but now in okay. cement with the capex what will happen is uh, the depreciation there is going to be certain depreciation but then the top line is also going to increase whereas we didn't generate sales as far as solar is concerned compared to the amount of depreciation as debited so our ratios are likely to be going better going forward compared to when we installed the solar plants correct sir you had mentioned that when uh, marketing efforts will be started 3 months prior to the commissioning just i wanted to get a broad sense from you is it going to be b2b or you are directly going to approach the consumers the builders or the uh, the people or how is it going to be is it going to be organizational tie ups or what what kind of setup are you looking to uh, support the enhanced infrastructure so currently we are working with few consultants and uh, we as such we don't have an accurate view on which way direction we are going to go but typically the way we will be looking at on a broader picture is the increase in the retail points increase in the number of sales executives also have a new marketing executives and have a new marketing plan put in place and approach the institutional and the government buyers for a bulk orders so that is where we are going to be looking at and uh, we have uh, got clearances from all the government projects any government project that we have done we have got the quality clearance and everything else it's just that we are not able to fulfill the requirement because the capacity is generally very huge Okay. So one one part I have seen in the presentation as well and in the company, Portland Cement, the sludge. If you can just uh, give us a broad sense of how is it going to benefit circular economy, which is going coming out in a larger way, or are we a part of that uh, play, or how are we going to support because roads are now are becoming more uh, sustainable rather than just mining and limestone is one of the depleting resource and other uh, oxides and other resources. are we into those players or do we have the capacities to support sustainable roads as well or infrastructure coming up with so if you are talking on a physical matter basically yes i mean as a country grows i mean we are one of the lowest consumers of cement on per capita even in sar countries living pakistan we are uh, still sri lanka and uh, i don't know about sri lanka now but a lot of other sar countries are high of us when you talk about uh, you know concrete consumption or uh, cement consumption per capita okay. so as we go there is an expected possibility based on the projections given by the government of india that our cement see in india the current capacity is 500 million ton utilization is 375 million ton around 70% is the average utilization in the entire country and it's mainly because the monsoon season cuts down on your uh, this thing and uh, secondly uh, by 2028 or 30 around another 400 to 500 million tons is expected to be added which will take our capacity or consumption of cement per capita uh, to around uh, you know about 150 uh, kg compared to almost 500 uh, which is the world average so 
So with that, yes, we are expecting you know cement sales to be improved and uh, better. There's there is not going to be a significant competition like in the past uh, with the improved government participation in purchases and then there's the overall infrastructure growth. Cement is going to be a key product to address the infrastructure requirement. Perfect, perfect, sir. I just want last thing. I just wanted to get from your end because very rich experience and very rich profile of all the promoters. Any any such uh, in this financial year or the previous year, and also we have seen the capex cycle every three years, or this time it has been delayed to five years. So I wanted to get from your end that any two opportunities or uh, you had planned and it all gone out very well, and two setbacks or two or three setbacks which you have seen. Uh, you had planned in, but it was a setback due to any reason. If you can just share your experience throughout this financial year, or any earlier experience, and going forward, how are we looking? Uh, how are we looking optimistically more to the our business side? So typically, the biggest setback was in 2008, 2009 when we purchased the cement plant. So what we did not know was, uh, even though we had taken the consultants and looked through it, the cement plant was sh- shut down for almost uh, 25, 30 years. So that cement plant, what we purchased, had a kiln which could produce only 200 tons per day. That we modified to increase it to 450, and now it is increased to 700 tons of kiln production per day. But it's like a Mercedes car; beyond a point, you cannot refurbish the engine. So now what we're doing is we're all together changing a new car itself, or maybe putting a more advanced, removing the old engine and putting a more advanced engine, which will cut down on fuel consumption and uh, power consumption. So most of our failures came in 2008 to 2014 when uh, we struggled with the uh, you know uh, project with the old kiln very high extremely high. Today we are talking about 1100 kilocalories, but there was a time when we we were consuming around 1500 to 1600 kilocalories. Even the power we were consuming 200 units per ton, but that is all the past. We did lot of modification modification. Solar power investment became a huge advantage to us. The moment we installed solar power in 2018, that jumped our EBITDA from seven crore per year to directly 30 uh, in the you know maybe 25 crore in the early stage. Now it is 37 crores, and we continue to be over 40 crores this year or so. So that gave us a, not only gave us a benefit, it started uh, uh, you know getting a lot of cash flows to us, which is why we are able to do this capex now. In fact, the kind of modernization, demodernization, making what we are doing right now. Has been done by other cement plants, all the major plants in India, way back in uh, 2010, 2015. So we are just uh, doing the same thing over uh, 10 years later. Perfect. Okay. And, and 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 just a broad yeah, I just joined that with you. Just a broad sense of view after the capex coming in. Any revenue projections or EBITDA? Because you said that the EBITDA will be significantly increasing because we'll be not only reducing the cost by energy consumption. But the the cost by other raw materials or transportation, you per unit cost will come down. Just I wanted to get a sense of how is the road looking going forward uh, in terms of revenue, top line and bottom line for uh, probably one year and three years perspective. So since the project is expected to be commissioned in uh, uh, June 30th or let's say July 2024, FI 24 will not see a significant jump in uh, the thing because. Q1 would have been already with the old capacity, and Q2 will have uh, to. We have to adjust to us uh, what we call is the teething issues of the plan. In the beginning, plan always ties to uh, you know new initial issues. So we are expecting uh, subdued 50 to 50 percent capacity utilization, and uh, expected top line is uh, most likely going to be about about 200 cr, or maybe around about 175 and or 200 and above. Okay. EBITDA certainly will improve. uh till the plant stabilizes uh, we will have a difficult terrain but still EBITDA is going to be better than what it is right now fi 20 uh 6 onwards is going to be a capacity with 100% new machinery 100% uh, uh you know optimized plant so 3 years down the line yeah we are expecting over uh, so currently we are generating EBITDA of around 30 31% So and with the capex, we're expecting EBITDA to even increase itself. So putting the math with 300, 300 crores, uh, or even if you take 300 crores as the top line, our EBITDA should be expected uh, around 35, 36%. So by the math itself, says about 100 crores is what we should realistically expect EBITDA, assuming all the parameters fall in line. Okay. 
sir and the final thing all the pressure is on little bit bad uh, as well because of finance so how are we looking at to down two years down the line is it repayment of late, like accruals will be repaid or are we planning or any infusion of capital further going forward uh, what is your vision on the finance cost as well absolutely so what we are planning right now is uh, if you look at the finance cost it is going down year on year in fact uh, this quarter if you look at the finance cost uh, compared to the last year uh, in the last year most of this yearly uh, where there was an yearly requirement of to account for the finance cost you saw a spike in the finance cost in q4 if you look at all previous years this year onwards all those things have been adjusted for the quarter level so overall finance cost is going to be lesser than the last year and there is not going to be any spike in q4 financials like what we have seen in the previous years and very honestly if they uh, based on what is going on right now we will likely to uh, repay the bank earlier than what has been projected unless of course there is a new opportunity new expansion Company is not going to just sit on funds, and uh, you know, uh, either there is going to be put into something which is going to improve the share as well. If not, then we will just repay it and uh, you know, look for some other you know, cut down our uh, liabilities. Okay, understood, understood. So there is no currently any plan for uh, infusing in case six months, like uh, any of the buy rights or by any of the means, market or debt, other uh, because we have taken current loans as well. so probably you said the average cost of borrowing is around 10 to 12% so probably we can loosen it a little bit that's why i had an uh, asked that question so currently yeah. 10.35 is the percentage recently yeah. we have taken a loan for this capex uh, yeah. 80 crores loans have been sanctioned out of 80 crores about 15 crores have been dispersed as on september 30th so the balance uh, 65 crores will be dispersed by the end of march 2024 so that will show up on the balance sheet by the end of this year But that is purely for capex. So purely for capex. Understood. And the turnaround, as you said, it will be much faster, and the repayment will be faster. Okay. Sure. Sure. Thank you, sir. Have a nice journey. Absolutely. And just, I just had one request to make. Please uh, follow this conference, these con calls regularly. And yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, Amon. We will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Jainam Shah, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, how do how do we plan to capitalize on brand awareness? So typically, um, in, in cement, typically there is a tier one, tier two, tier three markets. Tier one okay. brands are the ones which are pan India, all over India. Every region okay. you get it. Tier two are typically you have more than uh, one or two regions, but not all over India. So tier three typically are those brands who are uh, have a presence only in a certain region in a certain area itself, like ours. These are the plants like ours which we uh, have smaller capacities. So the moment we reach one million ton capacity. Uh, we technically, you know, enter into a tier two branding where the pricing also is better. So typically, what happens is with the improved EBITDA because of the lower variable cost because of savings on power and fuel. So obviously, we're going to be investing in brand equity and uh, hire uh, the top-notch uh, uh, consultants who will uh, improve the brand awareness. And uh, is already a well-known brand in the region. It's just that because of our uh, restricted EBITDA and variable cost, we are not able to supply. to wherever it is required but yes with the capex when the cost goes down our brand equity we will be improved by investing in that and uh, you know the result is going to be improve the capacity utilization okay uh, and sir how do we just uh, address any challenges that we face with the raw material prices fluctuation because the raw material prices would be fluctuating every day i am believe no the for every quantity like i guess so typically cement almost 90% of the cost comes from only these three things limestone which contributes to around 10 to 15% of the cost you have fuel which contributes to around uh, maybe 50% of the cost and then uh, 50 to 60% and balance uh, is power 
which again contribute to about 30% of the cost that the helicopter of the cost so it is only the fuel which varies otherwise the limestone and power is our own uh, it's only the fuel cost which varies and it had gone significantly higher last year so last year the petroleum coke was almost in the range of 2 rupees 50 paisa per kilo calorie and now it is about 1 rupees 60 paisa so that 90 paisa 1 rupees saving translates into saving almost uh, you know significant amount for uh, cement plant but typically what happens is when the power uh, fuel price goes up there is a tendency of all the cement plants to increase the price Okay. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, Mr. Shah. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Gopal Chandak for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining the conference call of Shri Keshav Cement and Infra Limited. If you have any query, you can write us at info at kirinadvisors dot com. Once more, thank you, everyone, for joining the conference. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Kirin Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your line.